Our next guest is strong and resilient. Just a few days ago, she was in a car accident and will require surgery. Such is her commitment to the public salon. Her surgery is delayed till tomorrow. She is serious when she makes a commitment. She speaks five languages, has traveled the world, but has chosen Vancouver to be her home. She's a world acclaimed artist who uses her art to bridge culture and promote understanding. She knows only too well how vitally important this is. She lost a family member in a terrorist incident. Much of her work is not in traditional galleries, but in, in public places where every citizen can have access to her message. Please welcome Marie Curie. As some of you may know or not, I'm an artist, a sculptor, that now lives in Vancouver. I'm multicultural in every sense of the term. Born in Egypt, raised in Lebanon, with Jewish and Catholic background, European parents, and ended up settling in Paris. I discovered art later in my life. I was in finance, working with my husband and feeling quite successful and fulfilled. But little did I know that it was when we sold our company that I would discover my true passion. I took a sabbatical and wanted to try something new, something I had never done before and mostly not ever work with him again. <laughs> the moment I touched the first lump of clay, I knew I was onto something. My hands became my language. I was able to say things that I was never able to voice before. It was as if I had just learned how to speak. I was 35 years old. My adult life and experiences have become my tool, the canvas of my work. War experiences, relocation, new habitats, adapting to new environments, new countries, new languages, and political structures. All these things have influenced and enriched my artistic practice. I was able to transform these traumas and life experiences into forms and shapes that became my signature. Public art gave my work a new dimension and came to me in Vancouver over a decade ago, basically when we moved here. For me, it stemmed from the need to democratize art, to bring it out of the museums and galleries, opening it up to the city, raising curiosity and dialogue. Public art is seen as one of the most important markers in all human settlements, especially in Vancouver because of its fast growing pace. It inspires and activates everyone's imagination. It encourages conversation and stimulates creativity. The best of public art can challenge, delight, educate, and illuminate, and most of all, public art creates a sense of civic vitality in our cities, neighborhoods, and communities. Passers-by add an element of life to the sculptures. I'm gonna be showing you three different projects that are very site-specific. The first one is my first large-scale sculpture installation. Let's sit and talk. It stemmed from my need to voice zones of conflict and war into a sculptural poem. It was inspired by the ethnic and political conflict that perpetually afflicts the Middle East. But my message is meant to be positive, pacific. It aspires towards progressive intercultural dialogue in which everyone is encouraged to participate. These abstract sculptures that are true cursive Arabic script, read as a text in bird's eye view, and yet by their white and organic, almost archeological bone-like form, existed as seeds that could embrace you. I wanted this body of work to be a message of resilience, a message that would urge us to connect to one another, 
not simply in areas of global conflict that I experience, but also addressing the urban loneliness, the feel of disconnect, now that we are all so connected. Every public art proposal is site-specific. I take in consideration the topography, the architecture, the urban planning, landscaping, demography, the site's history, and of course the design parameters. I challenge myself to create an art piece that stays true to my aesthetic, yet complements the elements unique to a site. For Eyes on the Street, Charlotte Wall, with whom I partnered at this project, were given a site that you could see behind me, the last empty land development in Falls Creek. Recognizing the sudden density that has and will take place in this landmark, as a small cosmos in which thousands of families will make their home. And influenced by the readings of Jane Jacobs, a Canadian urban planner who spoke to the life and death of great American cities and how densified and urbanized areas make for a safer environment because people have their eyes on the street. So I literally proposed a sculpted two abstract eyes that like the eyes of the resident, would be recording the life of the street and its environment. They will mirror the growth of the area. Now, children's hospital. Sometimes ideas need to be very simple, childlike. In this instance, I was presented with a backdrop of a forest in a large space with a very high ceiling. I instantly felt the need to fill the space and not only the ground. Doves had always been in my sculptural language, but never had taken such meaning and presence. I imagined a flight of doves coming out of the trees and some of them landing on the ground to provide the children with some seating elements. They could climb on and their imagination would fly. We called it flight. It was a message of hope. Now, why is public art an arena I keep going back to? Well, it challenges me, forcing me to think outside the box. It inspires me and allows me to work with creative people, such as architects, landscapers, and designers. The competition is humbling and keeps me grounded. Now, if I'm going to leave you with one thing tonight, is that it is never, never too late to embrace your passion. Thank you.